Okay, welcome to today's video everyone. Today we're going to be talking about the conjugate root theorem. Okay, what does the theorem say? The theorem says, if P of Z is a polynomial with real coefficients and P of A plus IB is equal to zero, then P of A minus IB is equal to zero. So what does this, what does this really mean? It means that if you have a polynomial with real coefficients, and it's important that, it is, that there are real coefficients, otherwise this theorem doesn't apply. So if the polynomial has real coefficients, and you have a complex solution to this polynomial, then its complex conjugate is also a solution. And so I'll just be proving this to you in this video. Okay, so let... P of Z equal A naught plus A one Z plus A two Z squared and so on up to any power A N Z to the N where all these coefficients are real. So that's A I are real. That just means A one, A two, A N, all these coefficients are real. Okay. Now let's say that we have a complex solution alpha. So let alpha be a root of P of Z, where alpha is a complex number, so it's a complex root. So if alpha is a root of P of Z, we have that P of alpha is equal to zero. Now we can take the conjugate of both sides and get that P of alpha bar is equal to zero bar. But what's P of alpha? P of alpha is just substituting alpha into this polynomial up here. So we get A naught plus A1 alpha plus A2 alpha squared plus all the way up to A n alpha to the n. And we have the conjugate of all this. And that's equal to zero conjugate. But the conjugate of zero, well that's just zero. Okay? Now, here we use a property of complex um, numbers and their conjugates, we use the fact that the conjugate of a sum is equal to the sum of the conjugates. And so we get this. A0 bar plus A1 alpha bar plus A2 alpha squared bar plus up to An alpha to the N bar is equal to zero. And so this uses the property of Z1 plus Z2 conjugate is equal to the conjugate of Z1 plus the conjugate of Z2. Okay, so continuing, now we use another property of conjugates. It's similar to the sums but works for products. So we know that the, the conjugate of a sum is equal to the sum of the conjugates, that's this here. Now we use the conjugate of the product is equal to the product of the conjugates. And so we get this. plus a2 bar plus alpha squared bar, not plus, that's a product there, plus up to a n bar alpha to the n bar is equal to zero. What's the rule here? That's z1 z2 bar is equal to z1 bar times z2 bar. Okay. So now the next step is are recognizing that all these coefficients, since they are real, their conjugates are equal to themselves because the conjugate of a real number is just that real number, since a real number does not have an imaginary part. And so we get a naught plus a1 alpha bar plus a2 alpha squared bar plus up to a n alpha to the n bar is equal to zero. Okay, now here, we use one last property, and that is that the conjugate of a power is equal to the power of the conjugate. And so we get A0 plus A1 alpha bar plus A2 alpha bar squared plus up to An alpha bar to the N is equal to zero. But you might just recognize this as substituting alpha bar up into this polynomial up here. 
So what's this equal to? That's equal to P of alpha bar. And that's equal to zero. So this completes the proof because we've shown that if alpha is a complex root of a polynomial with real coefficients, then its complex conjugate alpha bar is also equal to zero. So just recapping. So the conjugate root theorem says if P of Z is a polynomial with real coefficients and P of A plus IB equals zero, then P of A minus IB equals zero. So once again, that just means if a, a polynomial with real coefficients has a complex solution, then its complex conjugate is also a solution. Okay, thank you.